The special referee is something we see a lot in wrestling. A guest ref might be needed in certain circumstances where the wrestlers in the ring require extra control. The stipulation can also be used to put one wrestler at a disadvantage. Since this stipulation shines a spotlight on the ref, it's common for the guest referee to be a highlight of the match. So in this video, we'll look at some matches where this happened, as we list 10 memorable special referee appearances. Number 1, Chris Jericho. First, we'll look at a match where the special referee completely stole the show. This occurred when Roman Reigns wrestled Rusev on Raw in January 2016. Jericho had made himself the ref in an attempt to prevent the League of Nations from interfering, and even though it didn't take long for the faction to get involved, Y2J knew exactly how to deal with them. Jericho proceeded to eject each member from ringside in a comical fashion. See you, kid. With each ejection being funnier than the last. See ya. Hallelujah, Jericho. Rusev is now an assault. Chris was so entertaining the fans nearly forgot there was a match still going on. It would end after Roman Reigns delivered a spear to Rusev to get the win. Number 2, Shawn Michaels. The Heartbreak Kid has been guest referee for so many matches there's even been action figures made of him in ref attire. Perhaps the funniest appearance as a referee came when he officiated Kane vs Rob Conway on the May 1st 2006 episode of Raw. The Spirit Squad were the acting general managers for the night and since Shawn was one of their rivals at the time, they made him referee wearing a May 19th shirt. This was going to be tough for HP. PK given Kane's hatred of this specific date. May 19th. <laughs> but Michaels had a clever plan. Sean went to check Rob Conway before the big red machine made his entrance. However, Michaels ended up dishing out a low blow to Conway before putting the May 19th shirt on him. And then throwing Rob out of the ring right when Kane approached. The mere sight of the date infuriated Kane and he got to work attacking Conway. Michaels watched on while sitting on the top rope. Conway then tried to escape but Sean made sure to throw him right back in the ring. Michaels then grabbed the trash can for Kane to use. The big red monster smashed the bin off Conway's skull and hit a choke slam. Kane didn't attempt the cover though and got ready to leave until he was summoned back by that all too familiar date. <laughs> A tombstone pile driver later and Kane was finally declared the winner. Number 3, Jesse Ventura. The main selling point of SummerSlam 1999's main event was the appearance of Jesse the Body Ventura as a special ref. Ventura was the governor of Minnesota at the time and given that the state was playing host to SummerSlam, having Jesse as the referee made perfect sense, especially given the story being told in the build-up where it was made clear the body rules. Ventura cut an impassioned promo before the bell. I'm proud I was a wrestler and I'm proud to be here tonight! Stone Cold Steve Austin would be defending his WWF Championship against Mankind and Triple H. Stone Cold and Mankind worked together initially, but this alliance ended after Mankind tried to hug Austin. Oh, it's the right hand. China's interference would prove costly for Triple H, as Ventura took it upon himself to eject the ninth wonder of the world from ringside. And the body is ejecting China from ringside! Mankind took a hard bump to the floor and would be covered by Austin only for the game to break up the count with a steel chair. Hunter then used the chair on Mankind, much to Ventura's frustration. As he and Triple H argued, Shane McMahon ran in to help the game. Shane ended up receiving a stunner for his troubles. McMahon was then thrown out of the ring by the body to a huge pop. While this happened though, Stone Cold got himself caught up in between the ropes, but Triple H was able to set him free. And I go upside down and I'm hanging <laughs> in the ropes. Upside down, I can't get up. There's no reason logically for Triple H to save me. Austin would then receive a pedigree. Mankind then came back to attack the game and hit a double arm DDT onto Stone Cold. And it was that that got the three count, making Mankind a three time WWF champion. <laughs> Once he and Ventura had left the ring, Triple H began to unleash a vicious assault on Austin with a steel chair to end the show. Number 4, The Rock. A month following SummerSlam, Triple H now had the WWF Championship in his possession. A title he defended against the British Bulldog on SmackDown, with The Rock being the special referee. Rock had been feuding with both competitors, so it was going to be interesting to see how he officiated the match. The Great One didn't disappoint. First, he attacked the Bulldog, then Rock entertained on commentary, and when he was called upon to count a pin, Rock gave Triple H an applause instead of counting the fall. This resulted in the two brawling with each other, ending with a rock bottom. Bulldog then made the cover as The Rock was on hand to deliver one of his most iconic lines. It doesn't matter if the, rock the, the Bulldog attempted to use the WWF title as a weapon, but it backfired as Rock took both Bulldog and the game out with the belt. The Brubber Bull then hit one of the best ever people's elbows. It's Sports Entertainment today! Oh, the people's elbow! 
The Rock posed with the WWF Championship as the match ended in a no contest. Number 5. Shane McMahon The Rock and Triple H would get their big pay-per-view singles match for the WWF Championship at Backlash 2000. The game defended the title with Vince and Stephanie McMahon in his corner while Shane acted as a special referee. The Rock was at a heavy disadvantage, being attacked by Vince numerous times while Shane turned a blind eye. The People's Champion stayed alive though and responded with a DDT, although Shane refused to count the subsequent pinfall. <laughs> This earned McMahon a signature right hand from the Great One, followed up by a double rock bottom through the announce table. Vince's shock reaction said it all. The numbers game once again caught up to the Brahma Bull as Triple H hit the rock with a low blow from behind following a pedigree. With Shane still being down on the outside, Vince signaled for the Stooges, Patterson and Briscoe to come out. However, help was on the way in the form of a returning Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> Austin dished out some of the best chair shots ever seen in WWF as the crowd went completely insane. Back in the ring, the Rock hit a people's elbow before going for the cover. And just like that, The Rock was the new WWF Champion. He celebrated with Austin to end one of the Attitude Era's most classic main events. Number 6. Stone Cold Steve Austin Austin was on hand to referee a match himself at WrestleMania 23 in the Battle of the Billionaires, where the losing billionaire would be forced to have their head shaved bald. Vince McMahon, who was represented by Umaga, faced Donald Trump, who was being represented by Bobby Lashley. Stone Cold established his authority early by pulling Lashley off Umaga. Austin later got heavy-handed when pulling Umaga out of the corner. This infuriated Umaga, enough to hit the rattlesnake with a Samoan spike. From there, Shane McMahon interfered, hitting Lashley with a coast to coast. Shane then revealed he was wearing a referee shirt and began to count. However, Stone Cold pulled Shane out of the ring and threw him into the steps. Austin was struck down again by Umaga once he got back in the ring. Meanwhile, on the outside, Donald Trump proceeded to beat the hell out of Vince. Austin finally managed to dodge Umaga and hit him with a stunner. Lashley then delivered a spear to the Samoan bulldozer as Austin counted the fall. In the post-match, Shane would also receive a stunner. Vince used this as an opportunity to escape. However, Lashley quickly caught him. McMahon then got a taste of things to come as he felt the bold head of Stone Cold, and once Vince turned around, he too would eat a stunner. It was then time for Vince to get strapped in as the billionaire's haircut got underway. Vince's facials and moans whilst in the chair were absolute gold. No! Ah! Oh no! Oh my God. The parting shot of McMahon as he walked back up the ramp helped sum up what was an all-time WrestleMania moment. Austin still had one more stunner to give out though, with Donald Trump being on the receiving end. Trump took the move so badly that the camera angle had to be altered to try and hide the botch on the DVD and network versions of the show. Hey! Oh, Austin! Austin stunned the Donald! And it looked like sh And he took it like sh It still wasn't the worst stunner in WrestleMania history though. Miss Riven trying to get away! But Austin starts Number 7, Mick Foley. Foley put in perhaps the most physical special referee performance of all time at Bad Blood 2003, where Kevin Ash battled Triple H for the World Heavyweight Championship inside Hell in a Cell. Foley was made the ref after numerous senior referees refused to officiate the match due to fears over Triple H, his use of the sledgehammer, and the dangers of the cell itself. So given the wars Mick went through inside the structure, there was no better man to ref such a match than the hardcore legend himself. Foley laid down the law by stopping Triple H from using a hammer, resulting in a shoving match between the two. Mick did, however, allow Nash to use a barbed wire 2x4. Mick then stopped Triple H from using the sledgehammer, but this resulted in Foley getting taken out by the game. The cerebral assassin then grabbed a steel chair and hit both Nash and Foley across the head with it. At this point, all three men had been busted open. Nash was now back up wielding the steel steps he successfully used on Triple H, with Foley also getting caught in the crossfire. Nash then inadvertently crashed into Mick, who was on the apron as the hardcore legend took a nasty back bump into the cell wall. Nash Nash used the barbed wire 2x4 to his advantage once more before hitting a jackknife powerbomb. Foley raced back in the ring to count the fall even though he was meant to stay down. This meant Triple H had to kick out which resulted in an awkward finish to the match where Nash essentially waited for the game to strike him with the sledgehammer. <laughs> A pedigree later and Triple H retained his World Heavyweight title. Foley took so much punishment as the referee that this was essentially a triple threat match. Number 8, William Regal. Next we have an example of a special referee being drafted in to try and ensure the wrestlers in the ring destroyed each other. This was Commissioner Regal's plan when he made himself the ref for Chris Jericho and Chris Benoit's match on the April 9th edition of Raw from 2001. Regal put on a very entertaining display here from the way he rang the bell to the way he demanded Jericho and Benoit punch and kick each other instead of chain wrestle. Jericho hit a double underhook backbreaker and then hooked the leg of Benoit. Regal, however, awkwardly counted the fall since he wanted the match to continue. Come on! What the hell is... 
Regal didn't care about a winner as he waved to the crowd instead of counting Benoit's pin attempt off a German suplex. This made Benoit push Regal into an incoming missile dropkick. The commissioner then lost his temper by punching out both Y2J and the Crippler, but this proved to be a big mistake as the two Chrises proceeded to punish Regal with a backdrop, lion soul, and diving headbutt finished off with a Walls of Jericho crossface submission combination. It was fun to watch Regal's entire plan backfire. Number 9, Sami Zayn. Next we go to Raw in the summer of 2019. The match in question is unique in that it featured two referees, with veteran official John Cohn working in the ring and Sami Zayn acting as a special referee on the outside. Zayn's good friend Kevin Owens took on the Universal Champion Seth Rollins in a non-title match. Zayn made his presence felt immediately, first by patting down Rollins before the match and then stopping Seth from striking Owens once the bout got underway. Sammy then distracted John Cohn just as Rollins made a pin attempt. After this, Zayn even entered the ring to check on Kevin, but in doing so, prevented Seth from hitting a move off the top rope. Sammy would finally get caught up in the physicality when Rollins hit a suicide dive onto Owens. Once Owens was back in the ring, Rollins delivered a curb stomp and went for the pin. Zayn got involved again though, by this time pulling the inside referee Cone out of the ring before he could count to three. This angered Rollins who ended up putting his hands on Sammy which led to Zayn calling for the bell. Owens celebrated the disqualification win but his friend Sammy wouldn't get off so lightly as Rollins beat down Zayn with the help of a steel chair. Zayn was undoubtedly the star of the show here. Sammy later spoke about his performance led to higher up seeing him in a different light. And for some reason, Gorilla was very tickled by my antics. But something in that moment, they're like, you're just so entertaining, you can do anything. Number 10. Dean Ambrose. We'll close things out with an example of a babyface special referee looking to screw over the heel. This happened when Dean Ambrose was made the guest ref for AJ Styles' match against James Ellsworth on SmackDown in October 2016. Before the match could begin, Ambrose comically emptied his pockets by handing over each item to AJ in the ring. Once things got underway, Ambrose would have some fun by distracting AJ to allow Ellsworth to get a shot in on him. No fist in See, that was a close fist! And that was a right hand! Dean then tripped up Styles and ignored Ellsworth tapping out of the calf crusher to take a phone call. Styles was none too pleased with this, but it only got worse as Ambrose fast counted AJ while he was on the outside. Dean then prevented Styles from winning by count out by throwing Ellsworth back in the ring. Ambrose also took the time to sign autographs, which enraged the phenomenal one even more. AJ has to be commended though for how he saved Ellsworth from injury when executing the Styles clash. Ellsworth was headed for certain injury had AJ not changed his body position at the last second. Following this, Styles went for a cover but Ambrose stopped his count at two. He then gave AJ the dirty deeds and pulled Ellsworth on top of Styles for the pin. AJ managed to kick out at two and a half. This made Ambrose leave the ring again to stop for a drink before coming back in the ring and hitting another dirty deeds to AJ which this time gave Ellsworth the victory. Ambrose another dirty deeds! And that brings us to the end of this video. As always, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you like this one, be sure to check out our video on 10 times the table didn't break when it was supposed to. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.